Hello, this is Sean Norley, Community Manager here at Hemlock Farms. Got uh, some fun events this weekend. Uh, the Hemlock Players Performance of Sylvia is this weekend. It's Friday and Saturday at 7.30 and then on Sunday at 2 o'clock. Uh, this is at the Steer Barn. Tickets are $15 in advance at the administration office or you can buy them at the door at $20. So Sylvia is a, a comedy but it's for mature audiences only. So, But still tickets available, so go uh, check out some local theater there for you. And then on Sunday, we've got the Swing and 60s party at the Hemlock Farms Archives and Museum. Uh, this is from 12.30 to 4, and this is a 60s uh, party. You can dress 60s if you want. We're going to have 60s music playing. We're going to have blankets out on the, uh, on the lawn there. We're going to have some fun games, Twister, other uh, 60s games for you. And uh, should be a fun event. Uh, there's going to be food. There's going to be some drinks. It is a BYOB. Bring your own blanket. If you do want to have an alcoholic beverage, you would have to bring that. Also, uh, some kids crafts, uh, educational presentations, and then we've got selfies with Horace himself. We're going to be selling apparel. Uh, Stephen, when he was here a couple weeks ago, had a couple of the, the shirts uh, and sweatshirts on, so that's going to be available to purchase there. So it should be a very fun event. Next weekend, Sunday the 27th, is the Conservancy Annual Fundraising Dinner. Uh, that's $75 for adults and $35 for kids. And we do have a link that you can use to get your tickets. Tickets are only on sale until this Sunday at 9 a.m. So go on that link and then purchase your tickets. That's a great uh, fundraising event for the Conservancy. Obviously the Conservancy paid for our e-cycling this year. They paid for our shred day. So whatever money that they make from donations usually comes right back to us and uh, pays for things so that the association doesn't have to pay for them. So, so go check that out. I want to talk about the pools as we're getting closer to Labor Day um, and our lifeguards are going back to school. Uh, as I mentioned a couple weeks ago, we will have to go to pool monitors. Uh, look for these updates on uh, the website on the hub for when we will have to do that. And this is like what we did last year where there will be a staff person at the pool They'll be a monitor. They won't be a lifeguard. They'll be watching. They'll be checking badges. And they'll just make sure that everybody's doing what they're supposed to and follow the rules. So this allows us to keep all of the pools open until Labor Day um, so we don't have to shut anything down. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough lifeguards to keep all three pools at lifeguards until Labor Day. So watch for those, uh, those updates. But unfortunately, here in the next couple weeks, we will have to make some changes and go to pool monitors at some of our pools. So, uh, Then the last one I want to talk about is um, a new educational item that we're going to start here. And this is the spread of aquatic invasive species. And we have these uh, posters that we've gotten from the, uh, the Boat USA Foundation and then Sea Grant, Pennsylvania, which is a part of um, Penn State Extension. So... And what it's saying is, and explaining is what you need to do if you use your watercraft in other uh, lakes or ponds other than hemlock farms. So what we don't want is maybe you, you have a motorboat uh, that you take out to Wallen Paw Pack or take to another lake. When you get out of that lake, you want to make sure that you wash it properly. There's invasives. Um, they could be weeds, milfoil. They could be... Um, a pest of some sort, like a zebra mussel, that could get onto your boat and if it's not washed properly and you bring it back to our lakes, then it could get into our lakes and then we have a problem with that. So we're going to start this. We got these posters. We're going to get these out. Uh, we're going to do social media on it, but we're really going to try to educate owners on what to do. And this could be motorboats. It could be a kayak. It could be a canoe, any of those items. So if you are using them in uh, lakes and ponds outside of uh, hemlock farms. This is something you want to look at and make sure that you understand what you need to do to clean these off uh, before you put them back in our lakes and ponds here. So look for this, but it's a good program. Something that we got uh, uh, when the Conservancy had their uh, presentation on Memorial Day weekend and uh, we got these posters now, so we're going to start uh, educating all the members on that. So. Uh, one more item I have is a, a mailroom update. Uh, as you know, a couple weeks ago we had to change the hours to the win of the window from 12 to 2.30 on Monday through Friday. And unfortunately, these last couple of weeks, Hannah's realized that 
they need to close at two o'clock. Uh, they clo they open later because of uh, getting and distributing the mail out on time, but they also need to leave to have any outgoing mail delivered on time. So she thought they could do it at 12, 2.30 rather, but due to the volume, uh, the mailroom now has to close at two o'clock for the window. So, so starting immediately today, uh, mailroom hours Monday through Saturday will be 12 to two only, okay? So, and uh, again, that's for transportation to make sure that uh, they can distribute the mail on time here and then also deliver it to get it out on time. So change there um, and uh, something that we'll just have to deal with. But uh, thanks to the mailroom staff and Hannah for uh, getting it out and taking care of this. I know the volume over there is uh, increasing daily. So that's all I have this week. It's going to be a fun weekend. Hopefully get out to do some of the fun events, uh, some good weather, hopefully. So thank you very much. Take care.